Right, check one, two, let's do it. All right, hello, my name is Tree. Uh, I've been wanting to do some coaching slash critiquing uh, of skating for a while to kind of help uh, people mostly on an individual basis improve, but I'm sure there probably is something that will translate uh, to your skating, maybe, if you're trying to learn. <laughs> I'm sure maybe. <laughs> Yeah, it's confident right there. Um, and anyways, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I think I found uh, the perfect uh, specimen, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but anyways, it's um, it goes by the name of Jonas, uh, and the channel is The Blading Physio. Uh, he just had his 25th birthday, and he did uh, 25 tricks for his 25th birthday. Uh, it's a fantastic channel. I would definitely recommend you checking it out. He is a physical therapist. And he has a lot of great tutorials uh, about uh, stretches you can do to alleviate pains and uh, things you can prepare for skating. Uh, I found out about him through uh, this learning set slides video. Uh, but things like treating your stiff neck and these shin splints and blading have been really, really beneficial to me. I did this blading meditation this morning. Oh, and it was, it was really incredible. Um, the first ever blade-related meditation that I've ever ever heard of and done and it was uh, awesome so if i have one request really from you uh jonas i'd say uh please make more of this uh hopefully maybe a little bit longer uh to uh to get a maybe deeper meditation but uh this was this was definitely great and he also does um some talks with some very uh popular youtubers like 30 from rolling and then um stefan brando um and there's some others in there that i've not checked out yet but uh, also some some trick tips for some some basic things, but uh, in CBD, I need to watch this one still too. I'm curious about that. Uh, but a lot of um, science and um, and physiological things uh, about skating that uh, typically get uh, ignored by people like me. Um, for instance, I'm not even stretched yet, but uh, I'm probably going to do some skating, so uh, I need to take his advice more often. Uh, I think uh, I think I'll do a lot of good for a lot of skaters to uh, follow his teachings. Uh, but anyways, we're going to try to switch up the script here and, and teach him a little bit because uh, he did request um, some some tips on how to improve his skating in this most recent video. Uh, so we're going to do just that. And it might be a long video. Um, it's all really geared toward Jonas, but uh, like I said, I'm sure there's a lot that can transfer over to other skaters. And if you're interested in uh, getting the same or similar treatment, uh, just hit me up, uh, message me on Instagram. That's probably the best way to get a hold of me. And uh, we can talk and maybe uh, maybe do something for you. Uh, but anyways, uh, I want to start with two things before we even get to the video that I would recommend for you, Jonas. Let me just switch the camera here real quickly. Uh, first thing first, I would recommend these here. Uh, these are footprint insoles. Uh, they are made for skateboarding and to take really large uh, drops, and they absorb a ton of impact. Um, I've had these for uh, these these same insoles for probably over seven years. Uh, these are a little thicker. They make smaller ones, but I probably recommend the thicker ones. They basically add kind of a size to your skate, uh, but they are so worth it. I cannot like I I can hardly skate without them. Uh, if I do, I feel really kind of naked really because they absorb so much impact that like basically a six stair gap feels like i'm jumping up a like a curb it absorbs that much impact so i would highly recommend footprint insoles i hear good things about super feet i've not tried those out but uh footprint insoles absorbing impact uh you teach about that in some of your videos and i think that's uh, if you're not already writing them i would highly recommend picking up a pair of those and also, before we get into actually watching your skating, I would also recommend uh, you get back on this cess slide thing. Uh, there's uh, an enormous amount of things that you could learn from cess sliding. Um, a lot of it is actually preventative. Uh, if you learn how to cess slide well and you miss a trick, uh, it'll help you um, get your balance and also help you in your bending. Since you do, I I've seen you, You've, you did this really well. I want to see a part two of this as well. So there's another request for you. I want to see some updatedness of cess sliding, um, and it's a great way to practice um, stance, getting low, um, feeling feeling friction, and uh, getting a low center of gravity. And uh, it's just an incredibly beneficial thing. Like, I love my cess sliding, as as most of you probably know. 
um, and it's it's extremely beneficial to um, regular grinding, um, believe it or not. Uh, and it's just uh, it's an easy way too. You can just slide off um, off season. All you have to do is get some boards uh, from the department store or some cheap flooring or something like that. Wax them up, throw them down, and you could be at your house test sliding uh, wherever, in your garage, I don't know, in your kitchen. <laughs> I do it in my basement. Uh, just wherever. And um, there's very low low friction. Um, low, you're already on the ground, so if you fall, you just kind of roll over. Um, there's not too much chance of accident, especially like if you have like carpet or something next to you, that'd be, or grass, uh, that'd be a great um, but yeah, it's a great way to get your low stance and, and the fuel sliding out. And I just can't really recommend test sliding up. It, it's really, really fun. Yeah. All right, let's check out your skating. I'll go ahead and do one preliminary through and then we'll get to the nitty gritty for uh, probably each trick. We'll see how things go out. But uh, let's check you out and do get an overall impression about your skating. So it's just starting out, very good speed, jumping with both feet. Fantastic. Great setup. Great that you're wearing pads. Um, you look very confident on skates. Um, that The fact that you're really only been skating, I think, a year aggressively uh, is is very impressive. I, I was not doing this level of skating my first year uh, by any means. And the fact that you're trying switch tricks is also both smart and um, very impressive that you can do things both ways this early in the game. And it's very smart, it's very clever. Um, it's good for the, the long run to learn switch tricks as soon as you can. I compare it kind of like learning a language. Uh, the sooner you start, uh, that's the easier it is. Cause the harder you, the more, the longer you go skating without trying to learn switch tricks, uh, the harder it's gonna be. So um, that includes spins and looking over both shoulders. So that's that's something I, I highly recommend the uh, people that are, are newer to skaters, new, newer to trying tricks is, is to try to do them both ways, uh, as most as you can. It's it's uh, really good. But yeah, Soul 180 out, very nice. You see the skin that spins out, so adding a little bit extra flair to the, to the tricks is nice. Switchbacks I need to do, very, very impressive. Uh, I can't, <laughs> I can't even do that. So that's awesome and working on that kind grind. And that's, this is a square ledge, so Getting those top sides like that is um, it's cool. That's that's uh, fantastic. But let's go ahead and, and dig dig a little bit deeper in here and uh, try to figure out how you can do things a little bit better. I guess uh, you could say. Um, so soul grind, the first one. So this is the this is looks like your staple trick, um, and you are very solid on it. I would say uh, I mean uh, it's probably your warm up trick. I assume. Keep on doing the solo. Try to. I would try to perfect the solo grind if, if I was you. I would really get get the solo grind down, and then once you have like one trick really down, you can just expand from there. Um, a lot of it, a lot of times, a different trick is is literally just tweaking your your foot uh, to a different position uh, and still having that base foot or base base knowledge set skill set to uh, to do something different, which is uh, I think you're very much on that path. Uh, jumping with both feet, landing with both feet at the same time, um, very good. I mean, I, I don't even do that, so uh, you're already better than better than me in the soul grind in that regards. Uh, that's a difficult task for me. I, it's just a bad habit that I learned when I started skating, and uh, again, bad habits harder to unlearn than good habits to learn, I guess. So uh, something to keep in mind. I will say that you do seem pretty stiff in the upper body area so this upper torso looks pretty stiff and rigid oh, i mean st stiff in the knees as well uh, i know you have some so you have some ankle flexibility issues uh but um apart from that you could bend these knees a lot more um and the shoulders uh the, your center of balance seems rather high so that is something to be be mindful about. Uh, it's not a very stable looking stance on the soul grind and you could easily, um, it could easily go wrong. And these, their hand positioning um, looks like it probably tumble if something were to stick or 
if like say there was, was a fall four, you you would. Uh, I don't know if you'd necessarily be ready to take the tumble, um, being this high up. And things hurt a lot more when you're when you're when you have the higher center of gravity like this. Um, so bending the knees could help. I will show an example of that soon. And also, I noticed too that you did do the 180 out, but you actually did something really cool here. If you look at this front foot, shifty out, which is uh, something I'd recommend giving a try. It gives it kind of um, doesn't give it. I'd say like. Modern skating is really about giving it, giving tricks that extra little flair. Uh, since I mean, people have been doing these tricks for so long, you really gotta gotta put that icing on the cake and and give it something a little bit extra special to make it uh, stand out from just a soul grind. And I'll show you some some things you can might try to to uh, to enhance said soul grind apart from the stance. All right, so let me go ahead and get strapped up here. I'm going to be using um, some Colts with uh, flat AEs because uh, so, these are probably the closest to your roasty setup, which is a great setup to learn on, by the way. Uh, I've seen you've had a couple pair of uh, Majestics. Um, they have probably not too big soles, which are nice, which helps you kind of get, get over your soles. And the uh, Royales are a little bit more heel-based uh, and not as sticky-outy, so you have to actually get down on your Royales more, which is something I would highly recommend. Uh, I'd also probably recommend switching to flat um, soon, sooner the better, uh, and not like a cheater flat, like a wish frame <laughs> or uh, anything like that. Probably like an actual flat. You could maybe try even put, putting your uh, your current setup into flat. Uh, and the reason for that is because anti is is it's like a I wouldn't say it's a bad habit, but it's um it's much easier to learn on, uh, but could it can be a crutch later on. But if you learn flat, um, when you have a small, a smaller area that you have to nail, it makes you really be precise when you grind, and you also it also makes you bend over more so you don't get the wheel bite, uh, and it also learn, teaches you how to deal with wheel bite as you, as it comes. Um, so if you can power through wheel bite and you can be precise on landing your grinds and also bend enough to to grind flat. I wouldn't say getting a pair like this, no way. Um, but uh, something easier than this, but something not as easy as a wish frame. Uh, it would be super, super beneficial in the long run. Uh, it's going to be much, it's going to make the learning curve a lot higher, but I think the payoff will be also higher too. So it's, it's that risk reward kind of thing. Uh, but just again, my um, my advice, don't have you don't have to take any of this really <laughs> if you don't want to. And that goes for anybody. Uh, you don't have to listen to me. I, I'm just one guy. Uh, listen to whatever your heart tells you and, and go with that. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I'm going to do some examples on this and kind of show you how, uh, how I would recommend going about doing a soul grind for now. Since we're on number one, the soul grind. I don't know if I'm going to do all 25 of these. We might skip through a couple of them, but I'll do as much as I can. And hold on, my camera cut out. Happy birthday, Jonas, by the way. Um, 25 years old. Uh, I'm kind of aging myself here, but I've been skating longer than you've been alive, which is, I guess, kind of sad for me to say. <laughs> but either way, uh, enjoy the youth. Um, luckily, 25 is not too old these days. That's actually very young for a rollerblader. Uh, I remember a time when being 25, you were <laughs> kind of a geezer. Uh, in the world of uh, rollerblading, but uh, nowadays 25 is, is a great young age to uh, to be into it. So, congrats on your youth. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and demonstrations on a uh, soul grind and how to uh, improve. So, looking at that soul grind, your stance seems to be high and close to. Yeah, so even trying to standing like this, it's hard for me to uh, stay stable. I'm very, very shoulder heavy. And if you'll notice, um, if you'll notice like pro skaters are really good skaters who've been skating a long time. Uh, it's usually mostly lower, lower body motions and weight, whereas the upper body is not terribly used much, just maybe just a little balance here and there or, you know, not really at all if you can really nail a trick you just can statue and, and stay in one position um, but yeah try to try to lower your, your center of gravity as much as possible and you could do that by kind of opening up the hips 
And then you could widen the stance a little bit and you bend, bend, bend your knees. And that will get you definitely lower center of gravity to make, to make just momentum and falling and just things in general a lot better for, for grinding, definitely. And skating in general, really. Uh, so here, let me try to do that. Let me try to do it how you did it and, and see how that feels. And I stepped on, but it, it works. But uh, I think I still bent my knees a little bit more. Let me try to bend my knees a little less. And it works. I, I feel very much um, on edge, though. So let's try to bend the knees a little bit more. And... Uh, Get a little bit more stable. So yeah, a little bit wider stance, a little bit more centered to the ground. It's, it's weird to say. Um, it's kind of something that happens in time. Uh, but just just try that. Keep that in mind. Let me kind of show you some examples of of some extra flare out that you can try to do. So you can try to shifty like that out. Um, since you're really close to it, and I think you're, you have it solid enough to, to uh, give that a shot. And then you can try a kick out as well. And just kick your, your sole foot out to give it that extra little, little juice. I've already seen you do the 180, uh, which is to the left, which is technically my switch. But if you can learn how to switch, uh, if you can learn how to spin out of it both ways. Oh, jeez. That's a terrible example. All right, try that again. And like kind of spin, pop out of it. This is a great way to learn uh, and, and a great way to uh, prevent some things. There will be times where you'll need to bail out and you'll need to be able to spin both ways. So let's try spinning the other way. Well, I need, I need to practice myself. Let's try to spin the other way. Let's do that again. And that will prepare you for a whole number of things. So again, try to spin both ways. I'm unfortunately of the nature where I uh, only spin well one, <laughs> clockwise and not so good counterclockwise. So also another tip I would recommend. Well, I recommended it, but I'll recommend it again. All right, let's carry on. I believe... Actually, I don't know what's next, but I'm thinking something based off of Soul Grind. Again, speed so good. Very nice. Shows confidence. So we've got a mistrial. Uh, this one's a little bit lower to the uh, lower. You'd see your shoulder, you're bending over a little bit more. Knees are a lot bent uh, compared comparatively to the last time. Uh, the actual mistrial itself, this has I would kind of classify this more of a, as a mizu with your skate touching, uh, but the skate touching is, is probably the first step. Uh, but it is, the mistrial is, is is definitely a difficult um, soul trick. Uh, and the fact that you did the number two is, is pretty pretty impressive. Um, let me go ahead and go over how I would recommend approaching a mistrial. So. Mistrial, at least from that camera angle, looks kind of like you're almost neutral, maybe a little bit on the edge. I would try to get down to the boot if you, at all possible, uh, which will require more bending, probably bending over even more, bending your knees even more. Uh, you don't need as much ankles for these. Um, if you can, I mean, I like to loosen my skates to get some more ankle bending, but uh, that's up to you. I know a lot of people like riding their skates really tight, um, and that's probably a good idea. But I'm a weirdo, so again, you don't have to listen to everything I say. So getting it in like that is, is really just the trick. You get in sole foot, get really dig deep. In with that back foot, you try to hit that back slide plate, and uh, all the same motion while getting in. And it's it's very possible that the that back foot is going to stick. So it's a 
It's a, it could be a scary trick. As such, <laughs> it's definitely a trick I don't do very much with my left foot. I usually do it switch actually because uh, the back, it's like a back royale. Uh, I put more weight on that back royale foot than the sole foot. So kind of like that, a little bit ugly. Let's see if I can do a better, better switch than natural. Yeah, that's a lot easier with the back royale being normal. For me, at least. But mistrial, that's about, that's about all I can give you on the mistrial. All right, let's move on to the next trick. And a Mizu is a nice Mizu. Very fast. I think the only thing I'd say about that is try to get a little bit lower. Uh, I like the shoulder positioning on this. Hand position's good too in case you're ready to take a spill. I like that. And if I didn't say it already, I uh, commend you for wearing all your pads, knee pads, wrist guards, maybe shin guards, helmet, who knows what else, but I do commend you on wearing that. Definitely a good way to uh, do that. I know that's probably uh, me and my confidence. I know that it's probably um, what you, you need for your, for your work. Because you don't want to get hurt when your job is to be physical. So something also to keep in mind, I suppose, for you and, and people out there getting hurt. It sucks and it can ruin your everyday life. So definitely something to be mindful about. Uh, Mizu is, is good. This could be this back foot right here. Could be a little bit deeper in. Sole foot is fine. Still kind of straight up. The way you skate, you might actually be, be good at negative tricks. Uh, with this stance, uh, how straight up and down um, your sole is, how perpendicular it is to the uh, the ledge here. Um, so if, yeah, if you want to try some negatives, it's not terribly far off from where you're positioning at. Um, let's go ahead and do some examples right quick. Um, but yeah, I don't think that one's too off. You could definitely still bend over a little bit more. Mizus are a hard trick to make look good. So you're kind of like this. Hold on, I got a lace loose. You could stretch it out and get that knee down just a little more. That'll help with style. I don't know if that'll help with balance or not. I could be wrong. And then I think you're pretty straight up and down on that. With your skates, you could actually get over a little bit more on your sole, which is great. Uh, let's give it a shot. Just bend that knee a little bit more down and then hold it in. I do love a, a Mizu. It's, I'm, I really like putt slides, so that's kind of why I like it. And like, here's an example of like, an extreme example of getting like really low on a Mizu. Or not, hold on. We'll rewind that. I totally missed. I'm used to doing this on, on rails. I haven't done Mizus on ledges much. So there's. An extreme example of getting low on a Mizu, uh, but I don't expect you to get to get that low. But since you look, do looking at your stance, even a negative Mizu is not terribly far from your stance, uh, which would be. I probably don't want to go lower on a negative Mizu. That actually does hurt my knees. But negative Mizu might be a good start since you stance like that. But keep that in mind. If you do want to try a negative trick, um, negative mistrial might actually be easier if you can backslide and keep your backslide foot on and put most of your weight on your backslide foot and just use the negative foot as kind of like a guide. But it's just kind of like a cheap royale. Or like a different royale, not a cheap royale, but similar. Let me see if I could exemplify that. So here's a royale really fast on these skates apparently. And the negative or negative mistrial is really just shifting your foot up. You have to shift your weight a little bit, but uh, if you get your Royale down, it's not terribly hard for that. And there you go. And I actually have a switch negative foot uh, just because of that reason, because I learned to do 
negative mistrials. Uh, but it does open a, a window of learning new tricks. Anyways, that was Mizu and mistrial, I guess, in a nutshell. And negative mistrial. So if you want to give negatives a shot, it's a whole new world, but uh, it can be fun. All right, coming up next, you got the acid. All right. The acid, probably, the acid and the mistrial are probably two, the two hardest basic soul tricks, in my opinion. Because you really got to lock that acid, see as your, your foot kind of swims around there. You can, uh, it's probably switch, uh, which it is for me, the, uh, the acid, the back, the back royale, essentially. Uh, so I understand that. And uh, yeah, jumping with both feet on this at the same time is really difficult too, unless you've done it a bunch and are ready for it. Uh, again, standing up quite a bit. I think pretty much your balance points like probably right about here. Um, so the lower you can get that down here would be nice. Um, and shoulders, uh, still very, very close. Try to get those opened. And then these arms are are just ready to fall into fall into danger. Um, so, um, you know what? Let me give an acid a try and see what I could recommend. Because I don't do those very often. Uh, they're weird tricks. Just a basic acid. Um, sorry, I'd take my glasses off. They're starting to get foggy. So acid, yeah, like this. Oh god, that's terribly unstable. Uh, any number of things can go wrong, especially if your front foot, which doesn't seem stable, grips. Uh, that's something you're going to watch out for. So try to get the acid down. Get, you can get bend this knee forward. You can bend this knee forward and kind of bend this knee for, uh, like above your skate, essentially. Or And then lean, up, lean above it. That way you get a nice weight distribution. Feels like right here in my knees. And this pose to the shoulders. Let's try that. Yeah, that's uh, feels a little bit better. Let me try what, uh, try how you were doing it and see how that compares. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's really hard to maintain that uh, that lock on at that position. So I see, I can see why your your foot was a little going a little uh, over the place because at this position, holding an acid is. Uh, uncomfortable, really. But if you could bend down in, it'll fit in quite a bit better. And just the center of gravity and the balance point will be lower and a little bit easier to manage. Let's try it one more time. Prove I'm not a liar. I'm probably going to fall now. Okay. So, acid. Looks good. Like all these tricks, it looks it's a great start. After a year, oh my gosh, so good. I mean, really a lot of things are just repetitiveness, uh, muscle memory. I feel like, really, when I'm skating my best, like I don't even realize that I'm skating or doing the things. Like I'll plan, I may be planning something out beforehand. Then once you hop on the trick, it's all muscle memory that takes over after that. So, and then a lot of times, plan just because I ended up like that and my body's like okay we're doing this now so um, something to aim for I guess um, that feels good but uh, let's move on okay next up let's see what we got all right the porn star or peace star star grind however you want to call it uh, sunny day sunny day I think that's what we used to call it back in the day. Uh, ooh, interesting arm placement. Uh, and yeah, something to keep in mind. Upper torso really should just kind of be there. You're using a lot of a lot of the arms for guidance and try to keep it lower and just let the arms be there and just for minor adjustments. Uh, adjustments. Seems like yeah, the, and especially with this arm, I think this is dictating this because your knees are are together uh, and this is um, 
and it's touching the groove. They're touching each other, which is a good way. I think in, on a on the star grind, you don't necessarily need to touch your touch both skates. Again, this is kind of one of those tricks that I I do better switch than normal because I, it's more mine is more torque based rather than the sole foot. Uh, but um, let me see if I can try it your way. So with the the sole foot to the right, and then the, uh, the elbow bend with the uh, torque foot. Okay, let's try that way and see how we can we can improve that. So sole, sole foot out, star torque foot bent in. Okay, and then knees touching, standing up. Oh my gosh! I don't know how. Yeah, that too. Um, yeah, um, I can't really see that being carried too much further with any um, decent accuracy. Let me try that again. It was an interesting feeling um, trying to imitate other skaters. Yeah, that, uh, and it doesn't. It puts a lot less friction on the grind, which makes it kind of unstable. And I kind of felt, as you see, I fell off the side that way. So the way I would recommend doing it, I'm not going to do it the way I would do it, just yet at least. So like this, again, kind of like the mistrial. Then the front knee, my front knee is kind of basically over right where my toe is at. And then for the back foot, get the knee bent in. The knees can touch, that's fine. Skates don't have to touch. It might be a little bit easier to make it a little bit separated. And hold that, so. And then, again, shoulders kind of bending down. Kind of get that weight off the shoulders as much as you can. And down to, I feel right here my hip's pretty good. And I'm also got a lot of weight on here and the sole foot. Decently evenly balanced. A little bit more, it kind of tears back and forth as far as weight goes. Distribution on the feet. Uh, but if you're sole heavy, you can still keep it on the sole more. Just means you just need to bend the knee a little bit more for that. So that is a left foot one. Let's see if I can do it any better than the right foot. Maybe. Yeah. So yeah, basically a knee. Try to get your knee on about a line where your toe is. It could go a little bit more, a little bit less, whatever you're comfortable with. But try to get that knee bent to about where the toe area is. And for the back foot, it's, it's uh, kind of like the acid weller. You just got to do it a bunch of times, and then you'll get a good feeling of where the back foot needs to go. But again, try to bend the knees and get a low center of gravity. It will hold much better. So, okay, we're on six of 25 now. Things might speed up more. Actually, you did some bonus tricks too, so we'll see how long this takes. If I need to keep on going. Makyo, uh, Makyo is, is a hard trick to get right. So, got a lot of momentum in the hands coming up actually for this Makyo. You are very prepped and ready to launch. Um, I don't know if you need this much prep for it, but maybe you do. You did even did the grab. It's a little bit late. Eh, did you get the grab? I'll count it. And then again, the Makyo foot, that sole foot's really good. So basically like a sole. Did step on. Makyo is, is a hard trick to not step on to, uh, at least for me. Um, but I, I think most people will step on to Makyo. It's just better to get your wish to call it. If you want to get it better, again, knee is very much straight up. You can get this closer to over the boot. Yeah, it's, it's basically a straight up Makyo, which is going to be really hard to, to hold for, 
for duration. In my opinion, I could be wrong. Very much true. I just noticed the Brandon shirt too. Nice, uh, the least. Uh, and the grab could be earlier. Uh, ideally, you want to be grabbing at the same time as you lock the foot, the the Machio foot. Uh, and you could actually hold hold the Machio grab a little bit longer too for that. So uh, let me give you an example, I suppose. See if I can if I can do better. <laughs> This one I'm a little bit unsure about. I love Machios, but I am hard at stepping up. So yours is kind of like that, which actually is pretty stable. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's, you don't have to bend your knees as much for the Machio. I feel like since you're only on one foot, being standing up like that is uh, not as bad. Let's try a little bit more bendy or, or my style, I guess. Well, if I don't slip and fall and die on my own ramp. Okay. And I got stuck. So eh, my net macchio is not too much different. So maybe try to grab a little bit earlier and hold the grab a little bit longer. Again, you know, you could try to do some some extra things after it is a good trick for that. Well, if I get stick and run to my own camera, I'm hitting a screw on this, or my own screw on the frame. One of the two. But I'm don't think there's too much wrong with your macchio, at least that I can fix. So yeah, you could do, hold the grab a little bit more, kick out, whatever, but Machio's pretty good, I think. You can get that shoulder down a little bit more, but I think that's pretty good. Pretty good. Don't have a lot to add to that. So Switch Mizzou, uh, not too much to go over that I haven't already already said it since things, same thing Switch. The front knee is actually really good. Might be a little better. Maybe you have more bending in your your left your left knee than your right knee, because this one is kind of straight. What you could do is again with the shoulders, instead of being standing up and a little bit apart from the rail by trying to get that mizu back mizu foot in, you can squat down some more, bend this knee some more, and bend forward a little bit more. Then forward a little bit more, maybe like that. And get a little more grounded. Uh, pants and knee pads also probably can be prohibitive to your bending. Um, I like, me personally, I like to, I like either basketball shorts or uh, big giant pants that give me lots of leg bending bending movement. Because um, pants can be restrictive, they can definitely hold you in place better, but. For me, I like to be not restricted in, in my bending. Um, if you can imagine, I like to bend. But uh, let's switch Mizu. I don't think I need an example for that. Switch Mistrial again. Uh, it's a bit in between a Mistrial and a Mizu. It's actually a kind of cool trick if you want to do that on purpose. Uh, but I wouldn't call this a Mistrial. You'll need to. On that boot for it to be mistrial and of course bending and then bending like that for your mistrial foot so moving on switch acid uh, i believe you are are you a, i would say i'm uh, looking at this i would say that you're a right foot royale guy because it seems like this Royale foot locked in a lot better than your normal way. And you might have fallen off the one because your weight is on the right and not over top of the uh, over top of the grind. The, um, the, the, the hand positioning, the um, open palm like that is could be interesting, but uh, potentially dangerous being twisted like that. Um, should be more relaxed. So <laughs> just try to loosen up, relax a little bit more on the grinds. Uh, seems seem, seem stiff. I know stretching and stuff like that can help. Uh, but really, and I think that comes with also just confidence too uh, and bracing for, bracing for things to go wrong. Uh, I understand that. Uh, but the, the looser you can get, I think the, uh, the more fluid things will become. 
Smock Yo is pretty good, and didn't go for the grab on that, which is fine. Understandable. Um, again, weird. This is a weird um, distribution of weight. You're very back heavy. Uh, so it's going to be extremely weird to carry front momentum. Like if this were twice as long, it would be really hard to carry. So the more centered you can get, and maybe even lean, lean forward, uh, the easier it will be to carry a further distance and hold. Roller Skater Girl is getting it. I like it. Oh, I was right. You are a right foot Royale person. Royale, one of my favorite tricks. Uh, hard to make fantastic, especially with modern skates. Uh, you do not need to get as low or into the side as much. Um, decent spacing. Uh, knees are together, which is... Uh, Interesting for Royale, which is actually not terribly out of the ordinary, but you can definitely open up the hips and your st whole entire stance on the Royale for this, really. Uh, again, it's not kind of came up early. It would be hard to hold this for, for significantly longer, in my opinion. I'd like the, it could be bent over a little bit more, but not bad. I can't really see where the hands are at, but Royale, I'll give some examples of. I love Royale. I'm probably going to fall on this because I'm. This is not my normal setup. Uh, Royales, I like. I like to be very pinpoint and have my my grooves and everything just right on Royales. I don't like a stock Royale, especially on 80s. Uh, but anyways, so knees together, not a lot. Um, but yeah, if you have the right pivot, you can definitely you can actually carry that really far. As you can see, like I'm kind of bent over like this. I think they're more like this on your Royale. A little bit towards the edge. I like to really get on top of the Royale, but it does require some uh, some what you call. I don't even know if I could do a Royale like you're doing one. Uh, I don't know if I could really reflect that <laughs> terribly well. But either way, um, you could try taking yeah, open up the stance a little bit wider, keeping the Royale foot basically. Align with your butt crack. <laughs> to put it, to put it bluntly, would be a good balance. And then this, if you if you're like that, this foot could go anywhere, and then you can do backslides. But yeah, if you have your your foot right underneath, right along line with your butt crack, you can pretty much go wherever you want with the other foot. Let's try that. And yeah, you could open up, close it up, whatever. But I think that's the key to a. A good royale, royale. Line it up with a crack. Your uh, your frame or sole, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, right where your your balance points at. And it makes it really easy to do 180 out since you're right over it. And you're bent down, and you kind of get in a sitting position where you can really hold that forever. That's a royale tricks are a royale. In general. A good trick I recommend just doing in your shoes. Um, at any given time, that's like something I did. I don't do it anymore, but um, up until I was probably like 30, I would pretty much always be doing Royale just standing um, as a, you know, kind of a boredom or just when waiting for something, just stand in a Royale position. Even if you're standing straight up, just get used to bending that ankle over and just holding it and standing right on it will be... Uh, will be super beneficial. We can make a drinking game out every time I say beneficial. Uh, but anyways, let's move on. The next trick. We got the Unity. Okay, the Unity. Our Unities are tough. I am bad at Unities. Um, so if you play me in Skate and you do a lot of Unity grinds, I am uh, very hit or miss on Unity grinds. So I can't give too much decent advice on these. I will say, again, you're kind of, your center of gravity is a little bit back here. Um, you really want to be on top of it. And again, same thing, uh, you want to kind of make the, the weight distribution, uh, you know, kind of be where your, your butt crack is. Um, 
centered, whereas it's your center of gravity is probably right around here, then teetering up here. Um, you, need, you can do standing up, that's fine. I always say bending the knees is okay, uh, but it all depends on your frame and your your uh, sole setup or backslide plate setup. Uh, let me do some Unity's examples. See if I can't work it out on my own to figure out how you how you do a good Unity. Uh, I'm not going to do a switch Unity. Um, uh, that's that doesn't work for me. I see that your Unity is actually Royale based, so maybe I will do a switch Unity to try to learn since you're. Basing it on the Royale, and this is dragging, I would say probably treat it like a star. So how you're doing the star grind, keep put most of your weight on the Royale foot, and then this foot just kind of dragging, just to give you balance as well. Uh, but think of it as kind of a, I guess a weird backslide slash star grind combined. Uh, and I'm going to mess this up terribly because <laughs> this is switch for me. Yep. So, yeah, I can't really give you great advice on that because I can't do it very well myself. Uh, maybe someone else can, but my advice would be treat it like a backslide or a backslide and a star grind combined uh, the way you're doing it because I do mine torque-based. So, yeah, I can't really in good fashion do that, especially in these skates, uh, very demonstrantly, Demonstra demonstratively, I don't know the word. Okay, take a quick water break. Not self, we can cut this out or we could leave it in if I'm feeling lazy. We're halfway through. Okay. Actually, we're not actually halfway through. Backslide, oh. Okay, interesting backslide. This is the. This is the. This is really cool back. This is a really cool backslide. If you could pull this off for any distance, uh, you rarely ever see backslides like this, uh, and I am totally down to see more backslides like this. Uh, but it is a terribly difficult way to hold a backslide. Uh, not that I'm against it, uh, but not a typical one. Landing fine, but if you just want a quick backslide, that's, that's pretty cool. And if you were able to hold that for really long, I would be super impressed. Uh, this is going to be really hard in these skates, but and let's see if I can do it like that. <laughs> All right, so yeah, holding it out like that's kind of, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I, I like seeing backslides like that, but you don't normally. Again, it's like the Royale where you get that weight uh, just basically centered with you, and you can hold it. Typically, I do backslides like this, and I try to grab it. You usually don't. I'm lazy. But there's a thing where backslides should be grabbed, and I don't disagree with that. Freestyle one just to get the pivot point. Whoa. I'm going to go over. But yeah, if you can get the backslide over it. I know it's a lot harder on newer skates because with newer skates, uh, backslides are really fast. They did not used to be so fast uh, and were much easier to hold. Uh, but backslide grooves are really quick now, uh, which makes balancing them much more difficult. Uh, but if you can get your weight over and your other foot, Basically perpendicular. It's basically a royale with lifting your foot, and lifting your other foot up. Uh, you can carry it decently far, but it's a it's a hard trick, uh, which is why it's one of my favorite tricks because you don't see long backslides anymore like you used to. Yeah, I mean I can't really hold a backslide very long. I can't even do the whole thing. I'm sad, but uh, yeah, a backslide carry any length is is impressive yep yeah balance just goes out it's the with skates being so fast it's hard in modern skates uh well, i'm gonna try one more of, of your style of backslide which uh, isn't wrong uh and like i said very cool if you could uh if you could pull it off for distance 
Oh, geez. Hold on, one more try. Well, nope, I can't do it. But you did give me an idea, so I do want to do a backslide like that one day. I will be happy if I can. Let us move on. Backside far from nuking. Another one of my favorite tricks. It is essentially a reverse royale. Uh, but again, um, cess slides. Uh, learning cess slides made backside far from uh so much more comfortable for me because you get that friction and you could just hold on to it. And even if you get wheel bite or whatever, you can still power it through if you have the right center of gravity. Uh, this one, you are, you see you're not really even on top of it, you're kind of on the edge. So all your distribution is, is going on this side. So uh, I can see that it's maybe not your, in, in the wheelhouse, which uh, I think for a decent amount of people, uh, farce are just, are farce, if you will. Is that a dad joke? I don't know. But yeah, you can get more on top of it. Uh, knees are decently bent. And then also, your angle is not bad either. So how this is, how your, your center of gravity is pretty straight up there, maybe a little bit, a little bit back, so it could be a little bit more forward. Um, you can get a little bit more forward on far from Nugent since it's kind of a, a friction trick. Um, this is okay, but again, your your torso is, is more to this side where it should be this way on top of it, I feel like. I don't, know, I don't, I don't I'm not going to say no to a chance to do some back farce. Probably make them not, uh, won't probably not, not do them terribly well in these skates. But let's try. Oh, yep. These ones you got to bend a lot. 80 millimeters are pretty big. Um, Sorry, I don't have any frames set up that are similar. I actually can't take these frames off because the bolts are uh, stripped. But that's a different story. And, yeah, I can't do a good back slot. I'm back far. I'm going very fast at it, which is fine. Once you get it well, you can really, like for me, like I could basically sit on a back slide and, and be like, hey, I'm on a back, or back, Back far, if not backslide. Uh, you'd probably be standing up a little bit more, but same thing, basically a Royale in reverse. Uh, just your feet are turned a little bit more, at least I do. And then you want to be right on top of it. Because if you're too far, but if you're too far back, you're going to fall back, which isn't always the worst. Too far forward, odds are it's going to roll out. So let me see if I can do a back far. It's one of my favorite tricks, but kind of lost it over the years and, and focusing on royales actually there you go and again mine was a little bit forward I should, probably should be a little bit uh, more back on it one oh, of my wheels is stuck on something oh well so yeah you're not too far off just put the put your weight more towards your backside and I think that'll be good see what's next on the ducket. Backside Unity. Uh, very same thing. Actually, very good stance on this. Shoulder heavy. Um, head down, which is not bad. Eyes on the prize. Arms out for leverage, uh, which is natural. But you don't need to use, I don't think you need to use your arms as much. I'd focus more on on the leg action and the footwork. Uh, but pretty good. Uh, same thing, you can get a little bit more back. I assume that you're doing this more with a torque. So this foot could get a little bit more forward. Basically, I think of a, a backside unity a lot like a uh, acid sole and a torque combined, which is exactly what it is. But um, if you look at it like that, um, put a lot more emphasis on your, on your torque foot, the way that you're doing it. And uh, write it out, which you almost did. If you're, 
but I know the ledge was over, but yeah, I think if you just more, more torqued, see that's, that is the position and then uh, foot wise. And then this one could just be there. Um, but yeah, bending the knees a little bit more will help you get this backslide plate down. So it uh, is a little bit less jerky and just solid and uh, smooth right out. Scooter kid, I don't know what they're doing. Backside torque, and yeah, I think I think you're you got that really good. Just again, you can put it more on the back, and you can start a little bit earlier on the curb. Maybe you can jump both feet at the same time. Uh, you can start working toward toward a grab on that even, um, which is a favorite thing of mine. Uh, but yeah, I think your back torque is even better than your farf. Uh, if anything, maybe. Maybe do back back torques instead of farfs. Uh, that looks really solid. I would, uh, I would maybe make that a staple trick, uh, unless that was difficult for you. But this this made it look like it was uh, quite simple. And you could do a lot of fun things with back torques. You could swing that foot back around even more. Uh, here, let me exemplify. Uh, back torques are one of my favorite tricks too, maybe even more so than back farfs. But back farf, your back torque is really good. It's kind of like in the toward the front, like uh, kind of like a macchio, I guess, which is why you're doing well at it. Which is kind of like what I do. And you just hold that. So your back, yeah. If when you get it good, you can put your other foot wherever wherever it wants you to go, and you can kind of use it as balance too. So if you're you're too far back, you can take your foot back. And you're too far forward, you can kind of put it forward. Uh, and then, but uh, that's if you're freestyling it. Oh God, I can't even do it. These grooves are tough. There you go, and I mean, you can hold it on even if you stick. Uh, but doing with the grab, definitely harder, but maybe something to, uh, to aim for because the grab adds a lot of bonus points, and it makes it real, I guess. And again, you can really hold it out and adjust accordingly. A uh, very dynamic trick, so and it looks like you can do it well. So I would uh, implore you to keep on those backside torques, work on those. Make those a thing. And then you could also combo them in a trick. Oh, you see, you even, you even got a second angle of it. So I have a feeling that you are feeling the back torque. And yeah, you can do back torque. And then it's really easy to go from, say, like back torque to like Mizu, back torque to soul grind. Uh, it's just a quick shuffle of the foot, especially since it's really close to uh, being a soul, soul grind the way you're doing it, uh, which is not, not wrong. Uh, but yeah, if you do it to the if you were to do the slat, you would not uh, be able to. Oh, you don't even you have uh, you have slider blocks and you don't even have wheels in there. It really seems. Uh, but 50 50 frame, those are actually good at flat. So maybe that's terrible advice. It could hurt, but if you if you're willing to risk it, it could work out. Front side, uh, you know what? I don't think I have a problem with this front. I don't think uh, there's really much to say about this front side. You could be over it a little bit more. Oh, that's a clean front side. Uh, tricks that people don't really do much anymore, but I would say get a good front side. You don't really see it's 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 the first grind, uh, but you don't see it all that often. And um, it's something I say it's good to learn. What's coming up next? Oh, the front far for Nugan. This is a tough one uh, for a lot of people, and requires a lot of bending and. Uh, confidence that you're not going to get stuck. Um, it's kind of, uh, this, obviously your knee could be bent more. This back one is bent and nice. It's really in there, uh, probably from doing Mizu's and sweat stances. Uh, front knee, uh, yeah, you got to just kind of get that down, get that, get that backslide groove touching. I know it's harder because you have a, a little bit more to go than usual. And you can bend over a little bit more. Get a little bit more on top, but I know it's a scary trick. Uh, I will try to exemplify 
Um, I'll probably eat it on this. I'll probably get bitten. Um, but yeah, you try to want to get this in as soon as you can. Um, it's actually, since you've, I know you do sweat stamps pretty soon, they're actually very similar tricks as far as positioning, uh, amount of danger, and stand. So um, once you get one, try to think of one similar to the other because really it's just turning your foot. So if you're okay at your sweat stance or you're okay at front fire fanugan, the other trick can come decently easy. Uh, I could be wrong there, but uh, in my opinion, they are very similar. So just go up and totally miss. It is a scary trick, and that's what happens when you miss. You just kind of stick and, and don't go anywhere, and uh, it can be it can be not good. <laughs> So yeah, when you get it, you can ride it out. But yeah, to get your to get the balance plate is weird. The good the only the only saving grace I have is that it's it is a friction based trick. So you can it can be or forward or backward, and you could adjust on it if you don't get it in the right position. Uh, but yeah, I'd say with front far, be ready to adjust depending on however you land in it because. Um, it's uh, it's not as um, I feel like there's it's not as uh, reliable as a, a royale, even though it's essentially a reverse royale. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, the cough. Maybe I'll we'll cut that out. But um, that's really all the advice I can give for for a front far. Be confident. <laughs> Uh, and be ready to adjust or be ready for it to uh, not work out and take you wherever it's going to take you. Uh, but yeah, the way you're doing it, you're on a, on a good path. I mean, the fact that you did it on year one is uh, super cool. Backside. Peter being a little slow. All right. So backside. Uh, oh, I see why. Weird. Okay, we'll just do this a little by frame by frame. Backside. Uh, nothing too much wrong with that. Not that I say it's wrong, but nothing too much you can improve on. You can squat a little bit more, bend your knees more, and get a little bit more towards the back here. I know it's a ledge, but you can get a little bit more on top of it and then you can carry it really far. Because if you can find that sweet spot of the backside, uh, you can carry it for super far on a ledge, on a rail, wherever. But if you can get like right on top of it, so basically you're straight up, almost straight up and down, maybe just a little bit tilted forward so you don't fall back and hit your wheels or anything like that. You can really carry a backside. Uh, looks like you got that uh, pretty solid. So, no examples there. And I'm not trying to avoid doing front sides or back sides. You have them very well. Top out, pretty good on this top side foot. Top acid is one of my favorites. Your top acid is better than your acid. Because that. Uh, Maybe because you don't, have, you, probably because you, one, you don't have to bend as much, and two, uh, it kind of just naturally goes in that position around the top side instead of really having to force it for the regular ass. Uh, I think the stickler is getting this back foot on top. Um, didn't carry it very far. I think that might be because of your ankles. Um, it is a very ankle-based trick, I'd say. I mean, you can bend your knees more and, and open up the hips and, and squat down more. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, that's very ankle heavy. Uh, and there's a lot of actually weight on your, your backslide foot, which is switch. Uh, so interesting at that. Uh, very cool. Um, your skates are touching, interesting enough. So yeah, you could get over a little bit more. This, so this knee could bend a little bit more. So say this knee could bend just like that much more to get this a little bit. And then you could actually push out a little bit more. So it's not, so, um, 
So you get a little bit wider of a stance and you don't have to be um, so straight up and forcing this ankle to bend. Uh, let me see if I can show you how that would work or look. So yours is kind of like that, I'd say. Yeah, and they're really, t really close. And yeah, it's that's a lot of ankle, especially in in, in, a, in a frame like this. It's a lot of ankle bending. Um, and if you don't want to loosen up your which I'm gonna call it your leg, your uh, your your skates, um, you need that ankle support. All I would say is uh, work on those royales, and that will really help with your topside tricks. Uh, the better you can do a royale, the more natural the topside will be. Um, but for your stance, it's pretty okay. Oh, I can't actually do that. I actually have to extend, extend my front foot a little bit more. I don't actually bend my knee that much for it. I just kind of go, I kind of go like this, but it's, that's all on angle for me. So uh, for that, I can't really give you too much. My knee, my knee is bent, but this is a lot of ankle right here uh, for my skates and they're not tightened all the way. So to get that better, um, I'm a little bit stumped. It's hard for me to say uh, how that can be improved because that's going to be mostly ankles, I think. You can open the stance a little bit wider, and you can get more a little bit more on top and a little bit on it. But that does take confidence, and if you do come off, you're going to come off like this, which is not a fun time. So uh, again, it's all about a lot of things are about risk reward. Uh, really, just do the motions, and I think for that trick, you're going to want to uh, just try it and, and find out for yourself. Uh, but again, you do a lot of things. Um, you could actually do unities too. If you could do unities that way, I think you can. Ooh, the top side sole. Uh, this is a very beautiful top side sole, really. It's still a little bit away from the ledge, I think. And, um, but this front foot is in there really good and you were on there very solid. You went straight to it. Uh, yeah, just a little bit forward, but it's a it's definitely a hard trick to to um, to commit to. And uh, yeah, if you can't bend your ankles very much, uh, it's going to be hard to really give you advice to improve on that. It is like a staple trick, but um, to bend over, can't really say too much. Yeah, I mean, the more on top of you are, the better you're going to be able to to keep on it. Um, but yeah, without bending your ankle, it's gonna be hard to say. And feel free to take my advice and, and leave it. And here comes this wet stand. Uh, this one, uh, again, is another ankle bender. Uh, I think most top tie tricks are, are a lot in the ankle. And yeah, your skates seem like they're tied all over, you know, as tight as they can, they can be. Uh, this knee could be dropped a little bit more, uh, but you're pretty on top of it till you come off it here. You didn't didn't lock it fully. I think there's a little bit of rolly action going there, maybe just a slight. Uh, no, actually the frame sliders are hidden, but you can see this uh, this hole here. The uh, I think the skater code writes that you wanna don't want to be able to see these these holes in there. Um, I love sweat stances. I really do. They are just an ankle bender. <laughs> I mean, I, can, I bend my knee a bunch when I do a sweat stance. And back to the far for Nugent thing. I just want to do one because I love sweat stances. I'll probably miss first try. But I do love those tricks. If you can get on top of it, you can really write it out. But that's one of those things that just it is just so much ankle and just to get that up for your top side tricks I think you're gonna have to work on on ankle ankle strength 
Okay, let's move on. The topside mistrial is a very, a very scary trick, uh, as I've come to learn from the the uh, back to blading challenge. That I again forgot to submit, uh, and especially on a ledge, it's a very scary trick. And you did this probably better than your than your uh, sweat stance. And surprisingly enough, that's your switch royale too. So. Um, and you 180 out too. So I don't really have a lot to say. You could bend your knees more on this for some little bit extra style points and then crouch down. Uh, but that is a fantastic topside mistrial. Oh, and the alley soul. Okay. So you slam the soul. Okay. But here. Now, I don't do these very often either. You want to be more back heavy. This and more he more um, on your soul. It's like an out like, like a soul, but backwards. Uh, so you want this. You want to push your weight back on this soul and really carry out on the soul grind. Um, this is kind of almost like a weird. I'm not even sure what, but yeah, try to lean more back on your alley oop soul. Uh, again, you can bend the knees, and you this you kind of want your legs kind of switched uh, if you're going to do an alley up sole like this. So you kind of want this foot more straight like this, and then you can bend your knee like that for the alley up sole. Um, I can try to exemplify. Uh, I'm bad at those tricks. Again, another trick that I don't really do. I love them, but um, and they look so cool if you could do them well, but I just don't do them often. Yeah, I'm probably better at like a bin sole. But yeah, basically like a sole grind. Eh, you know what? Am I wrong on that? I think I might be wrong on that. I think you were fine. Bend the knee. I think you just, okay. So you know what? Let's delete this. Let's go back to this drawing. I take it back. Okay, so alley of sole, I think you want to actually, your knees bend. And then like that. There we go. Some more like that. And that would be an alley soul. So disregard what I just said. And uh, try it more like that. And let me see if I could try it more like that too. Oh, yeah. That's a, song. It's a trick I don't do. So yeah, it's a soul grind alley -oop, But it's in doing that, it's kind of like an alley -oop, or not an alley -oop, It's a little bit like a Farfrig Nugan, really. Uh, or kind of like a sweat stance, uh, as far as the way that back foot is. Um, so, kind of do it like this is a front side or a Mizu foot. And then this sole is the alley -oop sole, um, which this is your dominant foot, so I guess more uh, weight on your right foot. If that makes sense. But uh, that's all I got on Ali Soul. Ali Makio, okay. Well, you're going to need more rotation faster. So, what you could do actually, you could turn your, get the more rotation for this, you could turn your head a little bit faster. So rotate your head a little bit before you jump, I believe. I'm going to put this into practice. Before you jump, and that should get you spinning a little bit faster to get on that Ali Uh It is a scary trick uh, to learn. Uh, but once you get it, good. Ali Umakio is like one of the best filling tricks, in my opinion, if you can get it. And then... Obviously, you are still getting it down. You can still get you can get the grab in later, uh, but yeah, work on this motion. Arms are spreading out to compensate uh, for something, but you want to get a faster rotation so this can lock in uh, and be also again perpendicular with your body instead of back here. 
Um, but yeah, that's gonna take some work. But you, you locked it, you did it. Definitely, that is there. And you don't maybe, you don't need to, I don't know if you need to wind up as much. I could be wrong, I don't necessarily pay attention to that my, on myself. Uh, let me, let me see. Let me work this out myself. Because, uh, you know, skating, I'm not necessarily a coach, and I don't normally think about how I skate. I, I try not to think when I skate, quite frankly. But it's always interesting to to get into the how you actually do things. Um, so let me see if I can be a thing. So yeah, so if I turn my head before I jump, it does spin better and puts me in a, in a better position. And then once you lock that, you kind of want to be... Yeah, straight up and down like a regular Machio. Lean back a little bit to get ready for that speed. And then there you, I think the body takes over, really. Um, yeah, no, that's not really a trick I think about. But like I said, it feels really good when you, when you get it good. Which I can't do in these skates, apparently. Um, but again, you could, for a lot of spinning things, you can kind of cheat it beforehand by wind, instead of going up and winding up, you could actually be pretty wound up before you even jump. So if I'm like this, I'm actually like 90 degrees there. So I just got to turn the other 90 degrees. So the body's ready to go instead of when you're, when you're going up and winding up and then throwing it, it's harder. You got more weight going all over the place. So it's harder to, to be right where you want to be and then hold that balance. Whereas if you kind of pre-stage it before you even jump, you can basically be there faster and less effort and less you have to compensate for, which I guess explains the arms. There you go. And I had to kick back out to, uh, to compensate for it. But still, when you get a good Nadi Maki, it feels, it feels pretty amazing. So um, it's actually much easier on a, on coping than it is on, uh, on like a ledge. In my opinion, of course, everything is my opinion. Again, take it with a grain of salt. One more try, because I want to get it now. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's a weird trick, but when you get it good, it feels good. By the way, that's it, we'll go to the bonus tricks. All right, we're gonna add the extra part. So 180 out, a uh, good 180 out. See, and then again, you were already kind of winded up and ready to go. So see how you, your, your elbow here is already turned from the 180. So exactly what I kind of was just saying for something, you were gonna do something uh, for less effort and you just did it real smooth. Uh, again, you can compress a little bit more on the landing Absorb some of that shock, uh, especially on a 180, 180, or when you're landing fakie, you can really squat down to absorb a lot of uh, a lot of shock. Uh, again, the shock absorbers will help too. So 180 out, other angle. This one, this one you more pushed off of instead of were preloaded, which is nice. It's almost like you kind of pushed off your toe there and then use the front friction to do that. If you get really risky, you can go for the 360 out, which will require more just pretty much turning of your upper torso. Uh, with spinning, I'd say, um, spinning in general, if you, and Colin Martin has way better explanations of this than I do, but spinning basically, you can, if you throw your, this is where you actually do use your elbows, or not your elbow, you can use your elbows, but your, your shoulders, where you throw your shoulders is where the rest of your body will follow. So if you want to spin, I mean, go up and then throw, and then and your head too, your head and your shoulders will really guide where your spin is going to go. So the more you can whip this and whip this, that's where the upper torso comes into play is when you're spinning. Um, use it, use it, uh, use it wisely and use it with uh, conviction. To, uh, to guide your spin. So go like that, 
it'll just spin. So, but if I spin, if I spin without, and then if I jump and then try to do that, it's uh, much harder, which can be a cool trick, but it's harder to spin without loading, you know, loading that kinetic energy into your spin. So, uh, and so if you're trying to come off a grind, you kind of want to go up and then do that, and then throw your head through, through your shoulders and then your body will follow. So that would be my tip on spinning out of tricks. Uh, more than a 180, I guess, at least. But 180 includes as well. But uh, looking good, looking good on the 180 out. Very clean. Mizu 180 out, very nice. I like that you kind of kick the back and then push off the toes. Came out, um, the hands are okay. Again, see, so you could use your, your shoulder and be a lot, use your shoulder and your head and do be a little bit more effortless if you so choose. And that's, that's perfectly fine. Mistrial, you're getting closer to the, uh, at least from this angle, you can see it's getting closer to the back of the boot. Uh, but for a true mistrial, or not a true mistrial, but a real mistrial, you really want to be deep in the cut on this back foot. Again, same what I've already said. 180, just fine. Pushing off that sole foot. I like it. That is your dominant foot. It makes sense. Switch backside unity is a tough, is a, is a tough one. Uh, something that I, I don't even do. Um, all I could say is since you're really good at, oh wait, since uh, this, that'll be like, um, I'd probably, uh, this is a switchback torque, so I'd probably put more focus on your right foot uh, doing this like a back, like a back, um, back, back royale. And then your switch, uh, we're, we're like a switch acid. So yeah, back unities are like, a lot like acid soles, but uh, I'd probably put more foot weight on your right foot, since that seems to be your dominant foot uh, on soles and royales, which is probably m normal for the majority of people. And sweat stance, very nice. Fell on it, but that's okay. Can you try that again? Yep, kind grind. Oh, yeah, not sweat stance. I'll leave sweat stance. Kind grind. Um, kind grind, very good. Uh, again, it's another ankle trick. Uh, the cool thing about a kind grind is that it's not very different from a front side or a a royale. You're just kind of tur uh, turning your foot a little bit more, and, and the way you got on it too, you're very on very on top, which is a great way. So you rode it out very good. Um, for the balance, I mean, you're using your hands to balance. What you can do is, I mean, yeah, if you if you get it really well, you could lean forward a little bit more, kind of dip forward with uh, from your hips and bend over uh, for that. I like kind grinds. I don't do them terribly often. Um, I think that was your last trick too, I believe. So we'll just do a quick little kind grind. Oh, no, there's one more. Top porn, okay, so kind grind and top porn. Oh, I want to just do a kind grind for fun. So. <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taking over, just kind of skating, but I do love skating. Uh, but to, to exemplify a kind grind? Yeah, it's really just a royale. I mean, you have to turn a little bit more than doing a royale. But your foot just turn your foot and your body a little bit more than doing a royale. Uh, your foot wants to be a little bit more behind, uh, which you are, which is fine. I'm just I guess saying for in general, uh, instead of a royale, a little bit further back behind. So instead of your crack, put it behind the crack. And then yeah, you get on top of it. And if you're good at doing a royale, it's kind grinds um, usually come or can come pretty naturally after doing a royale. Uh, getting good at Royale, so I, yeah, I think that's why you're doing kind grinds very well. So 
um, if you're up to it, I would, I would keep on those kind grinds. They're looking, looking mighty fly. Whoa, slippery. All right, let me do one decent kind grind. And then uh, top horns are, are tough. And yeah, whichever way you spin out is whichever way you spin out on a kind grind, I feel like. Uh, but let's look at this top horn. Top horn, uh, again, that's going to take a lot of ankle uh, and probably knees. It's interesting that your knees are together and being on, you want to be on top of it. A good bend on your back on this one. It also seems like you have hip pads too, which is also smart. But also can get in the way of bending too. Yeah, so that's the last one. You did lock this really well. Um, okay, so topside porn star, and uh, I guess some topsides in general. We'll, we'll end with that, because uh, that's the end of the video. Um, but uh, so topside porn stars are actually tricks I do switch, and I don't do them well either. Um, yeah, you would think I'd be able to do them well at which McCall's because because I like sweat stances, but uh, I do them switch because I put most of my weight on the torque foot. So I will do it like you and put most of my weight on the sole foot, and then it's just lining up the which lining up the back you know, the back torque foot. So it is a strange trick. Uh, I can see why you're working on. I am still working on on top star grinds, top horns. I am I'm no no way or near consistent on those tricks. Yeah, those are like yeah, especially with my left foot, they're like kind of the bane of my existence. So yeah, if you play me in skate, do top horns if you want to win. Especially left foot ones. So yeah, I think that's something you really for me personally, I like to sit on it. Uh, which in porn stars in general or sunny days or whatever you want to call them I like to get on it And kind of <laughs> sit on my back foot. I don't know if you could oh, actually no, you can bend that far I've seen you I've seen your set slides um, Get as close to sitting on this back foot as you can and Then a if you fall it's not so bad and B it takes a lot of less of your ankle bending to get this top side down um, so that's would be a workaround for you to maybe try. Um, see if it works or not. Uh, if not, try to get mostly on the top side. But I think with the stars in general, you can put a lot of weight on the back and just kind of bend over and get on it, if at all possible. Um, if at all possible. So that's a that's a definitely a big a big thing. Uh, but for top sides in general. Um, Something you can do uh, without worrying too much is just jumping on and, and putting a top side foot down, and then because then you're just rolling, and you can feel out whether or not you can get top side or not, um, and if you can bend your ankle and knees enough uh, without worrying about if you slide out on the top side too much. So a good. Or at least, in my opinion, a good way to try top sides is just to jump on and put that top side foot down and then roll, uh, which is a okay, safe, oh, safer than just trying to grind for a top side grind, which could lead to other things. But just jump up and then see if you could slide, which is a good way to uh, good way to figure out the top sides are kind of kind of test the water on on top side stuff um, maybe like a primer for doing any top side trick uh, and then I mean if you get good enough you could do you know fish brain uh, side fish brain like that which are uh, which are very impressive but a lot can go <laughs> I even put my foot down because I'm used to I'm used to testing things out like that but uh, yeah if you could do a side a fish brain like that that is a lot of confidence on the top side. So maybe a goal to work towards for doing uh, the top side things. But we'll go back to just the camera. We'll see.
this was a workout. Uh, blading physio gave me quite a workout. I've, I did not stretch before this. Uh, I should have. I should stretch more often. So, reminder, watch blading physio and uh, learn about the physique and the physicality of, of skating. Uh, I need to watch more of them. Um, and uh, happy birthday. And I know you're going to get better. You've only been skating a year. You're just going to get better and better from here. As long as you keep it up. Like anything else, practice muscle memory and uh, experience. And uh, that education will take you far. So if you want to, oh, look how sweaty I am. Uh, but anyways, if you want some coaching or edit critique or filming critique or, I don't know, you just want to watch your stuff, whatever, I'm, I'm open to it, at least for now. So hit me up, Instagram, tryhardtree. Follow me on Instagram. That's where I post most of my stuff. I'm not terribly active on YouTube and other social media, but, uh, or social media in general, but that's the most active I am on Instagram. So thank you for watching. Check out Blading Physio. Say happy birthday, Jonas, and uh, skate. Enjoy it. And uh, thanks for watching this long thing. Hopefully you got something out of it, but uh, that's all I got. Bye now.